megalithic tomb uncovered in Ireland and is the find of a lifetime. 5,500 year old stone with detailed carvings. And this is what it looks like, a tumulus, a tomb, the new grange and the noth, and it looks like the tomb of Marathon. The tomb of Marathon, of course, was about 500 BC, that's two and a half thousand years old. This one is about 3,000 years before that. And look how similar they looked. Of course, the tomb of Marathon was a tomb of the Athenian soldiers who were buried there. But this, of course, was around for ages, and it was overgrown with trees. People used to climb it as if it was a hill. I'll leave a link below for you concerning this, images of Newgrange through the ages. The Neolithic Passage Tomb at Newgrange is the most visited archaeological site in Ireland. Over 5,000 years old, it predates the first phase of Stonehenge by a thousand years and the Egyptian pyramids by 400 years, so it's older than Egyptian pyramids. It's truly a massive structure measuring 76 meters in diameter by 12 meters in height, and it contains over 200,000 tons of earth and stone in its fabric. Its glistening facade of quartz is one of the country's most memorable vistas. Of course, it wasn't always like this. It looked like a mound, just like the tomb of Marathon, but the archaeologists found quartz stones around it in a rubble and they believed that it must have been somehow surrounding the mound to keep it clean and round. So that's why they renovated it by putting up the wall of quartz stones that we see there. And it must be beautiful in the sunlight because obviously quartz glistens. It shines with the sunlight. Now, in 1699, the image shows Edward Leeds survey of New Grange. It's the first known plan of the tomb. It was drawn shortly after the entrance in the mound was rediscovered in 1699. Up until that time, the entrance had actually been sealed and it was only uncovered again when the local landowner, Charles Campbell, began quarrying the mounds for stone. So he used the stone from that to do whatever he needed to do. In 1775, a view of New Grange by the antiquarian artist Gabriel Barringer shows us a large mound of earth and stone that is nearly devoid of trees. Although a number of standing stones which surround the mound are illustrated, the tomb entrance is not visible. And then later on, around a few years later, we have trees on it and surrounding it. The engraving of New, New Grange, the mound is once again shown largely treeless and the image of passage enters can be clearly seen. In an 1892 photo of New Grange, unlike the earlier 18th century depictions, the mound is covered in thick scrub, scrub and tr of trees and bushes. As you can see here, the late 19th century, the atmospheric shot of the passage tomb entrance shows a man emerging from his dark interior and was taken by R.J. Welch sometime in the late 19th century, showing an overgrown and partially disturbed mound, although the roof box through which the winter solstice sun rays should pass is completely blocked. Its decorated stone intel can still, the lintel can still be partially discerned one meter above the entrance passageway. Now, I'll leave a link below, you can see the old photographs, but the basically the excavation started around 1967, uh, images showing archaeological excavation underway at New Range, New Grange, extensive work carried between 1962 and 67, under the director of Professor O'Keeley. In 67 to 74, works on reparation, repairing the mound and its surroundings began in earnest. 
and they were not fully completed until 1974. The greatest change seen during this restoration between 67 and 74 are uh, the uh, works was the addition of a three meter high quartz, that's nine foot high quartz wall surrounding the new grange, the front of the tomb. This addition to the monument was based on O'Kelly's interpretation of the excavation result. He had discovered a thick layer of quartz stones spread out in front of the tomb, curb stones, for a distance of approximately seven meters, which he believes represented the remains of a collapsed wall. And obviously he's right, and I'll tell you why. This, uh, concerning uh, this resemblance to ancient Greek, ancient Greek tombs of the time of Alexander the Great. So he discovered a thick layer of quartz stone spreading out in front of the tomb, curb stones for a distance of approximately seven meters, that's about 20 feet, which he believed represented the remains of a collapsed wall. This, on his advice, the quartz facade was added to the tomb, but the quartz wall was deemed too unstable to support the weight of the cairn on its own. A four meter high reinforced steel and concrete wall had to be erected behind it. The quartz stones were then embedded into the concrete. And not surprising, this striking quartz was caused, has a wall caused much debate at the time, and the argument about its authenticity still rages on. Now, this is in the area of Bruna Boyne. It's a location close to the east coast of Ireland, approximately 25 miles north of Dublin city, about five miles west of the medieval town of Drogheda, and about three miles east of the village of Slane. Experts made the discovery near 18th century Doth Hall in Ireland, situated in the Bruna Boyne or Boyne Valley Tombs World Heritage Site. Two chambers were discovered inside the western part of the main burial tomb. A large stone cairn, 130 feet in diameter, was raised over the top of this tomb, and one curbstone is heavily decorated with impressive Neolithic carvings. This is what the archaeologists in Ireland have uncovered. The 5,500-year-old megalithic passage tomb, which has been branded the find of a lifetime. The experts unearthed the significant discovery on farmland near 18th century Douth Hall in Boyne Valley Tombs, which is a World Heritage Site. The excavation uncovered two burial chambers, as well as six curb stones, which would have formed part of the ring of stones that followed the perimeter of the cairn. One curb stone is heavily decorated with Neolithic carvings, these round little circles, and represents one of the most impressive discoveries of megalithic art in Ireland for decades, experts say. The research was carried out, as we know, by the University of College uh, uh, Dublin, uh, University College Dublin, UCD, School of Archaeology. The finds were made at County Meath, a land owned by Belfast-based agriculture and technology company Devonish, around 25 miles north of Dublin. Up to now, the two burial chambers have been discovered within the western part of the main passage tomb, over which a large stone cairn, 130 feet in diameter, was raised. During the project, a further two possible satellite tombs were also found, being smaller around it. This passage tomb and a number of its satellite tombs is the biggest discovery in the Boyne Valley area, if not the Irish archaeology, in decades. And what do we know about Neolithic Britain? The Neolithic Revolution was the world's first verifiable revolution in agriculture, beginning in Britain between 5000 BC and 4500 BC, spreading across Europe from origins in Syria and Iraq, between about 11,000 BC and 9,000 BC. That period saw a widespread transition of many disparate human cultures from nomadic hunting and gathering practices to one of farming and building small settlements. Uh, well, the other thing is that we know, and I'll leave a link below for you for this, having to do with the spread of 
the ancient Greeks through Europe, through Spain, towards Ireland, all the way to Scandinavia. And that is, of course, the Spartans and the tribe of Dan. That's why they have the various similarities of the tombs and the carvings. I wouldn't be surprised if they also find ancient Greek coins and pottery. Now, uh, as they did, for example, in Ireland, they found a coin of Alexander the Great. Of course, we know his time was about 350 BC. This is way before that. Now you can see the similarity, the round structure, even the height and the dimension. It's just about what we have in the new Grange. And now you're going to come up to what is the exterior wall surrounding it. It was uncovered recently and it's in excellent condition. It's as if it was built just a few years ago, as you can see here. And uh, that's why I said in the beginning of this video that it was proper for the archaeologists to put a retaining wall of the quartz stones around it, even though he had to put a concrete interior wall to, enfor to reinforce it. That's fine. Um, that's probably what the ancients would have done anyway. Obviously, they had excellent architects. And they also used the golden number uh, of phi in their construction. They obviously knew a lot more about architecture than we do today, I believe. So you can see the similarities of these ancient structures that were used for burying their dead. This one obviously here was for burying someone very, very high up in aristocracy. They even believed that it could be, for example, Alexander the Great's mother. But we're talking about the Amphipolis Casta tomb that is in northern Greece outside of Salonika. Amphipolis is where Alexander the Great had his navy. It was in a bay area, not far from Salonika. So, uh, that's why, as you see here, now we're coming up to the image of the Ireland New Grange, and this is the exterior wall of that, with the beautiful quartz stones that would shine beautifully with the sun glistening on them. So, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, I, for one, love history. I love uh, archaeology and ancient history because obviously it's part of our roots. We don't know where our great grandfathers and grandmothers came from. It could have been uh, anywhere in Europe or whatever. But uh, I will also leave a link below for you for those who are interested concerning the Spartan roots and uh, the Hebrew roots, the tribe of Dan being Spartans and spreading throughout Europe. But they actually they had trade routes. Uh, they were trading throughout the Mediterranean and the coast of Europe, all the way to the British Isles, even to Ireland and Scotland and Scandinavia. This is fascinating. I'll leave a link below for you for this.